Well, uh, my name is Vincent Lopez. I'm the Assistive Technologies Manager at the Center for Independence of Individuals with Disabilities serving San Mateo County. That's why we just say our, that's why we just say our name is CID. And, and I'm Ben McMullen. I'm the Systems Change Advocate at CID. Um, and I'm Alice. I'm a librarian with San Mateo County Libraries. Um, and I'm always just so excited to get to bring Vincent and Ben to come talk with us because they have so much knowledge about all these different things. Um, so, and I know today is one of their specialties. Um, I wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, we are recording this. Um, so um, your name and all of that will not be shown on the recording. Um, it's just the, the speaker and the slides that are going. Um, if you want to turn your video on or off, there is a little video icon that should say either start video or stop video in the bottom left corner of your screen. Um, and similarly with audio, if you would like to ask a question or share a comment, um, I know Vincent and Ben are always very open to an interactive <laughs> presentation. Um, there's a little microphone button that you can click to either mute or unmute yourself. Um, you're also welcome to stick comments into the chat. Um, during the presentation, if you're not talking, we ask you keep your microphone muted because sometimes background noise can be disruptive. Um, and with that, I think that's all of my housekeeping for the moment. I will turn it over to Vincent and Ben. And thank you. Start out here. I'm gonna do a visual description of the pictures on here. Um, on the top left, it's in very, it's an older picture of an older adult using a horn as a hearing aid. In the center of the picture, there's a picture of assistive technology devices like an accessible keyboard, accessible mouse, an iPad, a smart pen, and also the uh, Amazon Alexa, and then a like kind of reader and larger that'll go through and copy whatever you have on the page to put it up on your computer. On the bottom is a list is um, adaptive spoons, uh, pretty much going from a piece of foam wrapped around a plastic fork all the way up to a $200 liftware spoon. Also with um, the anti-tip, like a can with an anti-tip on it with a straw and accessible bowl and plate on there. The top right is the accessibility access button. And on the right below that is a, what is that? It's a thing to look with. And of course my mind just went blank on that because I specialize in deafness, but- um, a, a magnifying glass. glass. There we go. <laughs> so, what are what are what is assistive te technology and what are considered considered assistive technology devices? And these are all examples on there. And who can use assistive technology? Ben? The answer is anyone. Many people do not realize they are using exist assistive technology in their lives. And there are several examples of, sim of simple AT, which consist of glasses, pen holders, picture boards, a magnifying glass. And then complex AT would be augmented alternative communication tools, computer programs, and assistive apps. Dragon speech to text, access, accessibility options, and home environmental control systems. CID's assistive technology program offers information and referral. We utilize local resources to help clients find assistive technologies device and available funding resources. 
And if we're not the experts on the item or the assistive technology help they need, we'll refer them to a local nonprofit or another resource in the area that can assist them with their items. We do outreach. We attend and host local San Mateo events, including transition fairs, senior fairs. We also did a movie series with the San Mateo Library Group, and we're doing these presentations with Alice. Um, we also meet with local vendors for resourcing too. On our training, we work with clientele on the use of their AT items, phone, tablets, and computer accessibility. We specialize more in program training for the uh, accessibility side of it um, comparatively. So we will teach you how to use the accessibility items and we work with you and we break things down into small tasks um, to help make it easier to learn. So you'll, we'll break it down into smaller and smaller tasks and then, you know, make sure you've got that task down, then move on to the next one. Uh, we also do repair and modification. We repair and modify dur durable medical equipment for consumers. Uh, we did a workshop with Alice um, and the San Mateo County Libraries with uh, low cost, um, low cost uh, repairs and also using InstaShape or InstaMorph. It's a moldable plastic that you can use to pretty much help, you know, modify things or fix things and create things too on there. This is our main program where we get a lot of work from, um, assistive technology reuse program. We accept donations of items, refurbish and give out to consumers in need. Um, the types of items we offer in our reuse program is durable medical equipment, which includes wheelchairs, scooters, power chairs, walkers, rollators. We do a one-time goodwill of medical supplies um, once we get them, uh, incontinence supplies like bed pads and adult briefs. We also do home devices like patient lifts, commodes. I'm not doing bedpans anymore, unfortunately. I have to update that. Shower chairs, benches, and transfer benches. And if we can't accept the item, we try to match a donator with a donatee to arrange the pickups of the items. Or we also refer to other resources that we have, or we could put somebody on a wait list if they're looking for something special. We also take it out of high tech. I think I got to continue on there. Oh, no, I don't. So we also take uh, high tech items if a computer is less than three years old, tablet less than three years old, um, also like magnifying machines. Um, somebody, a person donated a big magnifier to me. And I had a consumer that called me that week that was looking for a magnifier who was losing her vision. And I went through and got her the magnifier and now she can read all of her letters and notes. And now we're working with that magnifier to teach her how to use her iPad. Does anybody have any questions about um, the AT programs at CID? Okay, we get, if you guys have any questions too, we could always run them at the end or raise your hand or, you know, um, yeah, just raise your hand in the little thing where you go to the chat and you have a hand raised. Okay, what is the definition of universal design? Is the design of products and environment to be usable by all people the group to, to the greatest extent possible without the adaptation or specialized design? And there's also a website for the Center for Universal Design. So the, there, there are seven principles to universal design. Principle one is equitable use. The design is useful and marketable to people with diverse abilities. Principle two is flexibility in use. The design accommodates a wide range of individuals preferences and abilities. Principle three, simple and intuitive use. 
use of design easy to understand regardless of the user's experience, knowledge, learning, language skills, or current concentration level. Principle four, precipital information. The design communicates necessary information effectively to the user, regardless of ambient conditions or the user user's sensory abilities. Principle five, tolerance of error. The design minimizes hazards and the, and the adverse consequences of accidental or unintended actions. Principle six, low physical effort. The design can be used effect efficiently and comfortably with a minimum of fatigue. And finally, principle seven, size and space for approach and use. Appropriate size and space is provided for approach. Um, sorry, the, the chat got me here. For oh, I know. approach, reach, manipulation, and use, regardless of user's body size, posture, or mobility. And uh, Ellen, oh, Ellen sent me a message, and I just returned to everybody, replied to everyone on there. Uh, <laughs> uh, asked if we still do stair lifts and ramping. Yes, we do have a home modification program, and it's uh, called our HAM program but do not call our housing accessibility modification person the ham person because, yeah. But um, I put in the chat, or reach out to Rachel A at CIDSanMateo.org. And if your household makes less than 100,000 a year, you are considered low, low income in San Mateo County. So you will qualify for housing modification services. If you're in an apartment, you will have to get landlord your, or you're renting, you'll have to get your landlord's approval and also have proof of income. And if you own your home, um, all you have to really show is your proof of income, your yearly income um, to qualify and that you have a disability. Uh, and then Marie put, wait, up, 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 up. Come on, I get way too happy with scrolling. Would cost also be a principle of design? that can definitely be a principle of design because cost is a huge factor, especially when trying to modify something. Um, yeah, when they built a lot of these buildings in San Mateo County and the Bay Area, especially Daly City area, there was no such thing as you know accessibility or the ADA um, on a lot of these homes. So a lot of homes are very inaccessible, especially Daly City homes I've noticed on there where they put like a huge stair on the side of the house and stuff on there. Yes, so cost would be a major factor on principal design. When we looked it up, they only had these seven on there. So, but yes, that's a huge thing right now. And I hope I answered that correctly. All right, cool. Are you me to take this with Vincent? Yeah. Okay, so under architecture and building, you have curb cutouts, which are helps wheelchair users and people who use walkers, realm and bicyclists and baby carriage carriages, round buildings with no corners help wheelchairs and deaf individuals and individuals in conversation, automatic doors. Door openers help people that use wheelchairs and people with their full hands, with their hands are full. Sit, stand, desk, individuals who use wheelchairs, individuals who are fatigued when sitting or standing too long, and that's better for health. Uh, ramps, individuals with walking issues, 
in wheelchair and people that use wheelchairs. And then as you notice with um, the examples we laid out, the universal design may have come about because of people with disability, to accommodate people with disabilities. But really the more accessible it is for people with disabilities, the more accessible it is for people without disabilities as well. And it's just a more accessible environment in general. Um, you see that with the bicyclists and baby carriages, and then and it, with the automatic door openers, you know, people with a lot of things going on, maybe their hands full um, with, with um, items. So many people can benefit from universal design. Next slide. The round buildings is kind of one that I like because um, I was studied deaf culture. And one of the things was, is you can't hear somebody when they're around the corner. <laughs> so with, when you have a nice eye view around, you can kind of see what's going on around the corners. It's things you don't really, I've never considered until I got into this. And then after that, I was like, that is so cool. What a great idea. And then can people put in the chat if they know um, to accessible universally accessible design um, buildings in the Bay Area? There's two really fame, well, famous buildings that are, are pretty much designed around accessibility in the Bay Area. And one is located in Berkeley, and the other one is located, I think, in Cupertino. The one in Berkeley is named after the father, father of independent living. Um, and that is, whoops. Yes, oh, oh, wait, you, Alex, got a you got it. Um, the uh, Roberts campus. And oh, and Alex Marie got the other one. one. Yeah, Maria got the other one. Why are we here, Vincent? I'm not sure. I know. So here's some pictures of, it looks like the Apple, and then the Ed Roberts campus. So the Apple Park Visitor Center has no curbs. Oops, wave, oops, oops. Sorry. Wave to <laughs> enter. So you just wave your hand to enter. Um, had an open space layout and curved walls so you can see around the corner and not run into people. Uh, the Ed Roberts campus, which I briefly worked in for a couple of years, is located at the Ashby Bart, uh, which is in Berkeley, and it sits atop the BART station, so you can go directly from the BART station to the office building. It has a, I'm sorry, I'm getting the message word up, helical ramp that winds upward to the second floor, permitting easy access and safe evacuation. It also has accessible elevators, automatic doors, wide corridors to create easy circulation. It has restrooms accommodate all ability levels and the group includes private rooms for assisted individuals. It has specially designed signage and wayfinding devices to guide people who are blind or have low vision. It also has hand-free sensors and timers, control lighting, acoustical, and security systems. Something else it has that when I was leading towards the Roberts campus is it has a fountain uh, for people specifically that are blind so they can hear 
where they are and then what part of the building they're in. Uh, so it, it very much orient, orients them to the space around them. All right, next slide. I'm just gonna so the two people that did answer correctly, yes, you will get a prize. You will get a prize. So just make sure, Alice, if you can note that down. Um, we got a prize. We got some assistive technology that we might be able to give out to you. So yeah, yeah, you guys get a prize. And wait, wait, there's three of you in here. Wait, there's three people here. You know what? Everybody gets a prize. So <laughs> Ben, I got an angle on that one. We'll talk about that later. But I got a cool prize. Yeah. So yeah, just make sure to get your contact information to Alice. And I think she already has your contact information anyways. And then um, we'll get with you and send you out a prize or we can go and visit your library and drop off a prize to you um, if you'd like to. Because we like getting out and about and we, we mask up too, so. Mm -hmm. All right, universal design and learning. Um, they have voice command, spell checkers, word prediction programs, definitions at a click where you can click on something and get the definition. Readers uh, for people that are low vision and blind, text to speech um, on there. So it'll read back to you and then speech to text, which you almost have to learn a new language on that one. Um, it's, it's a steep learning curve, but it is really cool when it does work and mind mapping. So collecting your thoughts. Um, if you're going to write a story or you're going to, work on a project or something they have mind mapping programs where you can go through and it puts out bubbles in a center area and then you just keep doing the bubbles outwards if you think differently like if you don't think like you know linear like you know like doing a thing and then basically you click the button on it and then it'll flip around and it'll turn it into an outline for you so it'll help you collect your thoughts and do an outline i really like mind mapping it's pretty cool Now, this is the website that I love, and it's also in the, uh, in the body of this, and I'll copy and paste the, uh, the link on the chat also. Um, Kim Sacchio at Skyline College created this resource called EdTech Tools, which is Educational Technical Tools. Um, what, you, what it does is it goes over, like I have a hard time maintain, you know, like maintaining time, or I have a hard time note-taking then they'll give you a list of applications and programs that'll work for you. And you could test them out because not everything works the same for every person and it's best to give options. That's what we've learned to find the best fit for items for people. So if somebody has a few options that they can pick and choose from and then they find out what the best fit is and then they work with that on there. So they have writing, um, speech to text, grammar checker, mind mapping, assignment calculator to show how much time you're going to put on stuff. Note-taking, my favorite app in the world for note-taking is Otter. They do give you a free, so many minutes for free a month. And pretty much if you're going to a lecture or you're going, you know, if you're going somewhere where it's kind of an environment, my mom doesn't hear that well. And she has hearing aids, especially in loud environments. We went to a play recently and we ended up, I ended up turning on the Otter app and then she could see what everybody was saying in the play because they didn't have transcriptions or and she doesn't know American Sign Language. So an interpreter really wouldn't work that well for her. So we just hooked up the Otter app, turned it on on my phone and it trans, and what it'll do is it'll record and transcribe everything for you, which is really nice. So, you know, pretty much it's like a built-in note taker that you keep in your pocket. Um, a live scribe pen, they work really great. They will record what you're writing on there. I mean, they'll record a lecture, but they won't transcribe it into text for you. But whatever you write down in your notepad, it, you could go through and click that time while it's recording and it'll play back also. And then with all your notes, when you write out your notes on there, you could flip the screen and then it'll flip them into text. So, and have really bad handwriting. It does okay. It's not great. I prefer the Otter app on there compared to for note-taking on it. 
and you have to buy a pen and you have to buy special paper for it too. So that's a factor on those. Um, you have Evernote, um, which a lot of people use. And then you have Google Keep um, for reading. They have text-to-speech text readers. They have Kurzweil 3000, um, which is a very popular one on there. They have a natural reader and then Claro PDF. I think natural reader and Claro PDF are, are free. Um, then they have pen readers also that can, you could scribe over text and it'll read it back to you. But again, your vision has to be good enough to see that text and to be able to scribe over it. Um, and then they have a program called Rewordify, which will change the text into a simpler format. So you'll be reading a news article and it's at like, you know, a college level article and you can press a button on it and it'll drop it down to like, you know, an eighth or even a fifth grade level on there to make the reading easier for people. Let me check the chat real quick. Cool. Oh, Marie had a question too. Can non-employees visit the Apple building? I think so, because they have a visitor center, but we haven't been there yet. So, hey, Ben, that's where we should go to check out your iPhone. Yeah. Ben they just got in. Take a trip to the Apple campus. <laughs> yeah. And then, oh, Ellen put a word finding app on there. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to give you the, I'm going to put the link in the chat. And then um, once we get done with the presentation, and then we could try and look for something like that. Yeah, almost like a thesaurus, I think, on there. And EdTech Tools continued. So she's got a lot of information on this web page. Um, for time management, you can use Google Calendar, Remember the Milk, or My Homework on there to help you manage your time. Um, I have issues with that, if you can't tell. Um, exam, work preparation, and focus tools. They have Forest, which will increase your focus time by minimizing distractions on your device. So it'll kind of shut down everything else and do a timer where you can focus on what you're doing. Uh, Prod is a to-do list for Google Chrome. And that'll also block your websites until you completed your items on your list, which I think is great. Um, Stop, Breathe, and Think is for guided meditation. They also have an app called Wobot, W-O-E-B-O-T, because you got to be woe now. And it's a chat bot that helps people cope with feelings of depression or anxiety. And then again, Kurzweil 3000, which will um, go through and highlight as it reads. It'll also go through and um, give you definitions of the words and also um, teach you the words phonetically too. And accessibility built in. Your computer, tablets, smartphones all have accessibility features built in. I always recommend going through those first before you try and buy an expensive application. Um, like uh, JAWS is about $1,200 a year. And that's the one for a lot of people that are low vision and blind. Most people get trained on JAWS. Uh, but again, it's really expensive. They have other alternatives that are free, but they don't work as well as JAWS, unfortunately. So um, inside Microsoft computers, it's ease of access to find the accessibility part. Google and Android, they have accessibility. Apple and Siri, they have accessibility. The nice thing about the Apple and Siri is Apple now has a smartwatch that has fall protection. So if you have somebody that's like, you know, an older adult that you're working with or an older adult in your family or friends or whatnot, if they own an iPhone, they can get the Apple watch and it'll, and it has fall protection, will alert a family member if you fall. So instead of something like, you know, um, life alert, which is a $20, you know, service fee, and it doesn't really, there's pitfalls to that one too. But with Life Alert, instead of paying $20 a month for Life Alert, you can go through and get an Apple Watch that'll kind of do almost the same thing. And it'll go anywhere with you as long as you have your phone with you compared to like um, the other one, uh, Life Alert, where it only works in your house and you have to pay extra to go outside the home to have that protection. Digital access. So... The California Foundation of Independent Living Centers has a digital access project for low-cost internet. 
And what they'll do is they'll find your internet provider and they'll work with you on a phone call to make sure to get the best deal for the service that you need. So a lot of these, a lot of the uh, companies that like, you know, they're there to upsell. So you have to get your special channels and you have to get this and that. So they're always trying to upsell you. These people help keep from getting that upsell done on you and they know the best deal. So they work to get you the cheapest price on there. If you're looking for computers or whatnot, you can go through human IT. If you're low income families um, or individuals, veterans in need, people with disability, uh, seniors or older adults now, so that's more uh, PC on there, and nonprofit organizations, you can go to humanit.org um, and you might be able to get a computer through them, either through discounted price or free. Um, the Digital Access Project, if you go to them and you ask them about human IT, they will guide you also through that whole process. And I'm going to, I'm sending Alice uh, a copy of this PowerPoint with everything on there so you guys can get access to these links. Okay, home automation. That's the new one. That's a lot of fun now. Everybody's automating their homes with Alexa and uh, Google Home. Uh, one nice thing, I used to be a caregiver and it was before these items were there. So I had to be back at the house. I took care of a guy who was a quadriplegic and I had to be back at the house by four so he could watch his judge Judy and to make sure he's okay. Um, he had a certain time where he wanted to spend time alone where we would leave and come back. One day I was late, he was sitting in the dark and he missed judge Judy, which was really bad because you know he was my boss. And they didn't have these items at that time. So once I found out about these items, he went through and got set up. He had an Amazon Alexa attached to his power chair. He, he had it set up so he could run his TV, all his lights in his house, open his garage door, control his thermostat. Um, it's a great, they're great products. Um, there are also ways to hook them up. So if you do lose internet connectivity, your home will still be automated for you also. We work with this great guy named Forrest and also with the California Foundation for Independent Living Centers. He did a um, presentation for us on what he does. He's out of Pacifica. He's really good. He cares about his consumers and he really likes home automation. And he blew me away because I'm geeky on it, but he, he got way better than I did. So, you know, again, if we're not the professionals and we don't know everything, we're going to refer you to the right person. All right, so how CID is working on creating an accessible environment. I, as the systems change advocate, consult with San Mateo County for accessible beach access at Tanitas Creek Beach. I do this in conjunction with the Commission on Disabilities and through the Commission on Disabilities, I sit on the ADA committee. So we have a hand and a say in all ADA access issues. And one of the major functions of that committee is to identify access issues around the county and then work to address them. So we'll work on uh, different properties, try and get it ADA compliant, um, and work on different projects. I'm also chair of the San Mateo Paratransit Coordinating Council. So if you aren't familiar with paratransit, it's a door-to-door -door service for people who cannot use the fixed route systems, at least on a consistent basis. And we work with Samtrans to really be the advocacy voice in paratransit. I am also an ADA trainer. So I went through a train, train the trainer on the ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act. So I can now go out to 
different entities, businesses, nonprofits, and different entities in the county and for that matter throughout the state and educate people around the ADA and advise them on how to become ADA compliant, answer any ADA concerns they may have. I advocate in my position, I advocate alongside all, all levels of government from the local legislature to the federal legislature. Um, of course, in San Mateo County, on behalf of San Mateo County, and uh, work beside all of our public officials. As I mentioned, I'm an ex officio member of the Commission on Disabilities here in San Mateo. I'm also vice chair of the Voting Accessibility Advisory mm -hmm. Committee. This is an appointed position by the Chief Election Officer. Mm -hmm. And what the back of Voting Accessibility Advisory Committee does is we work with the voting office to advise them on how to make the process of voting more accessible for people with disabilities. And I'm also a member of the National Council on Independent Living, which is our national umbrella organization and with them, I serve on the housing committee. So they have committees broken up into various uh, systems, housing being one, and I serve on that committee. And I am actually going to be part of a panel that presents at the Nickel Conference in DC this year. Next slide. A digital advocacy, changing the world one click at a time. Wait, what? Of course, the thing, one click at a time on there. So with our internet and our digital world that we have right now, um, a lot of things are changing and accessibility is becoming a bigger and bigger issue for people with disabilities. Um, during the uh, when you watch Netflix, they have a TV show called Daredevil. Daredevil happens to be a blind action hero. The thing is, is that when they came out with the show, they never did audio descriptions. An audio description is for people with low vision or blindness, and it explains the action that's happening um, when you're watching a movie. So instead of hearing like, you know, footsteps running, um, it'll tell you, you know, like man running down hall. And it'll be a person physically saying that. So it turns out under the settlement brought by the disability rights advocates, Netflix will provide a new technology called audio descriptions for many popular titles of its streaming and disc rental library. Also, um, Amazon Prime is doing that too on all their new materials. So people with blindness were left out. Now they're able to watch movies and watch a TV show with a character who's blind. <laughs> and uh, be able to understand what's happening. Captions, that's been a long going thing on there. Um, I kind of left it short on there because there's a long history of it. They had silent movies. Deaf people were cool with that. You know, they were fine with silent films, right? They had the transcriptions. But then when they started coming out with talkies, well, another side note too is um, in the Bay Area, um, it turns out Charlie Chaplin had a deaf friend who helped him be more expressive in his acting um, and kind of taught him to be more expressive, to show more emotion and whatnot. And um, he helped coach Charlie Chaplin on there. Uh, so yeah, and then captions, I think started in the sixties. Now they're going to the point where they're gonna have, you know, sign language interpreters at big events and things like that. You're starting to see more of that happening too because ASL is in true its own language on there. So, you know, now they'll have captions and a signer to respect the deaf culture. Websites, um, as you heard when I was going through the pictures, visual descriptions of pictures for low vision and blind. Contrast is a big factor. 
to make clear for low vision, setting a reading order for the website. Because if you're low vision and blind and you're using a reader, if it's not able to determine almost like you're um, in your books, you know, like how you have your chapter title and you know, like the whole thing on there, your website has to be laid out the same exact way. So when you click over to the, you know, when you tab over to the next thing, you know, then it could go into the subject um, and things like that on there. The rules for testing are still not really set. You still have to manually do it. And you have to use three different kinds of readers to test to make sure it's gonna work in that reading order. Um, but there is uh, testers for contrast that are pretty easy to use. And also like a quick test that you can do as an add-on on your, on your browser. Because um, I can go through and hop on somebody's website and I can just click it and I'll be like, oh, not accessible. But that's one thing that's happening now. And that's starting to become more um, bigger now, especially with COVID and with all the technology we have to be more accessible for everybody. All right. We made it. Does anybody have any questions? And I think I think Ellen had something on there for a word finding app. Um, if you want, I can go and hop into that website and uh, we could take a look. Let me see. Let me get out of the presentation. And of course, whoop, oh, and there's our group of resources. Let me see if I can escape that. There we go. And this is a list of the college, uh, Skyline College Ed Tech Tools website. So they have re writing, reading, taking notes, time management, preparing for exams. So on that a word finding app, let's go into writing and see what it says on there. So the one thing that makes it nice too is she kind of, Kim broke it down into a smaller into like, you know, it's easier to talk than write. I have problems with typing. I need help with spelling and grammar. I need help getting started or organizing my thoughts, planning and writing my assignments. So let's just go into spelling and grammar because I think that might be the one on there. So they have CoWriter, which is a word prediction tool on there. It could be a Chrome extension. And then the one nice thing that Kim puts on here too is who should use this? How does it work and what does it cost on there? If a person is going to college, this could be, a, all these items can be a reasonable accommodation if you have a disability. Um, my sister, when she went to college, she, re she didn't realize she had her disability till she was in her third year at state. And it turns out she has a hearing loss. And when she went there, then she finally went to the Disability Resource Center and they told her, well, Department of Rehab is going to work with you. And we're going to help make you successful all the way up to your bachelor's degree. So that's one thing that was really nice. They provided her with a computer, hearing aids, all the tools that she needed to be successful in school. So, oh, Grammarly is one that I like too on there. Oh, okay. And let me see. I think. Oh, and Valerie put, I'm very interested in accessibility and new constructions. Any recommendations on where I could find more info or learn more? I would I would think you could check out the uh, access board. Uh, they have a conference um, once a year, and I know they uh, address architectural or uh, New construction accessibility. You know which one it would be? Um, I'm sorry, I just Googled it because I wanted to give her a link. No, no, it, it's uh, Access Board, not in San Mateo County. Access Board is national. National. Um, US Access Board. Uh, 
And I'm going to copy and paste it into the link into the chat on there. I would I yeah. would recommend going into the training and webinars and looking at that. Um, just kind of browsing that website. And then we could do some research on it too and see. Yeah. It's more in terms of me working with people who starting to have, you know, who had a stroke, heart attack, uh, it, um, uh, starting to have dementia. So they're searching for words and it, you know, it's very frustrating for the people who not, who, you know, is trying to uh, come up with uh, their thoughts, but cannot, but the other person doesn't understand it. So I don't know what can help. In terms of communication? Yeah, you know, when they first, uh, uh, sometimes, you know, they improve over time. But let's say if a person had a stroke right. and they're trying to say, I need to go to the bathroom. They say, go, go, you know, uh, owie, you know, ow. And they're trying to tell you they need to go pee. And they're trying to find the word pee, you know, or urinate. So well, maybe still, a picture. it's a simple, it's, it's like a simple thought. Uh, and then uh, if there's something out there that can pick up what the person's trying to say and help the person. Oh, are you talking about you got to go to the bathroom right now? I think a picture oh. board might help. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about a picture board. Boy, opinion. that's going to be a big picture board. I mean, uh, uh, or cards, you know, a long time ago, they used to use um, flip cards or just cards for the words. But it yeah. takes a long time. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just like, wow, it takes a long time. So I just wonder if it has improved since uh, the, you know, uh, they, board they are Picture. They are working on it. I know, like I, I went to the uh, CSUN conference and they were working with trying to work with people with speech impediments mm -hmm. to, to try and like almost like a translator or something like that. But artificial intelligence isn't that great yet. Then so no, like, I was also thinking about and I, when I would think about voice synthesizers, they're pretty expensive, but I'm wondering if there's like a low tech version of what something the voice synthesizer might do. Oh, they do have a program um, through the Department of Rehab. I'm not sure if there's any age qualifications or whatnot, but it's called the, um, what's the name of it? Oh, man. I know it. San Jose does it. See, trying to think of words and you can't find them. Right. Uh, uh -huh. So it's not. Uh, <laughs> yeah. See, it's so like it's on the not, tip it's of my not simply a, a, a picture board or cards. Well, they they have so they have a program where they'll give you a a, a speech a, like almost like an AAC machine, which is an uh, it's like a speech machine, and you could program it with different words, and you can even set it to pictures. And then the, if the person has enough mobility, they could press it and it'll say it for them. But again, then they have to find where that little, you know, because like they put them into boxes and you can make them either big boxes and just have like a few on, on, the, on the tablet or, or mess or, or um, you know, like where you could do a bunch and make them smaller. And then pretty much like, you know, commands or whatnot, things that'll work on there. I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, but then you're talking about um, the person has the, um, is able to deal with a uh, location of, you know, uh, um, ultimately getting to that word or to that thought. Mm -hmm. And so, but then there's, uh, they're having a memory deficit. So. Yeah, yeah so, that, it's, it's yeah. really hard to, yeah, with with some things like that. Um, oh, so they don't have a computer, they hook up to the brain, you know, where they tap in and then it types it out onto the computer yet? Not yet. Oh, gee. No. Oh, how there it okay. is. Yeah, oh wait, no, that's not it. I'm, I'm trying to find that page too. No, nothing, nothing yet that's that, that's that, that I've seen being successful, unfortunately. 
it, they're in the works on a lot of those items, but yeah, nothing yet. Where is this thing? Come on, I saw it. I know the name. I'm trying to find that name because now it's gonna, voice options program, yes. Okay, anybody that's nonverbal, they have a voice options program through the Department of Rehab and you have to be in California. And then they will hook you up with, you know, it's basically skill and language development. I'll put a link in the chat on there. Yeah, I wish I had a better answer on that. But even when I was at the CSUN conference, which is pretty much like the big techie, the latest and greatest of tech, they, a lot of the companies, they don't have anything that's successful yet on there. But if you go through DOR, and if you have something that's nonverbal, they have a right to a voice, and this will help them get at least an, an AAC machine. Maybe the recognition might be better with pictures instead of words. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think on cognition on there because you know like how you connect things. Uh huh. You know, like that with the cognition, picture. if you don't have it, I mean, you know, if it's slow, it's more in terms of speed too. Like your listener is going to lose it lose patience or lose whatever, you know, uh, in terms of trying to get that person to, to, uh, to, I mean, you know, both parties to understand each other. And then you're talking about, you know, you know how the attention span is for a person, anybody. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But one thing is I've had, um, I sent a lot of uh, patients over to you for the um ramping is this still one inch to one foot yeah it's still one inch to one foot okay on and the, and you, the, it, the stair the stair lifts are so you know i mean it costs you guys money. i i don't get success for you guys picking up those kind of cases so i stopped well, doing that and then i sent them and then um uh, there's a couple of um companies that do do it and but the price is so prohibitive especially if they're poor yeah and i mean if if a person that makes less than a hundred thousand a year they're going to qualify for a housing modification but it has to be the household and daily no, city, no 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 you guys didn't have the um the money to buy more oh it's city. the other way around yeah each city we get funding for yeah and and we ask you guys always want to yeah, they want numbers mm -hmm. on there. So we have to like offset something big with small jobs uh -huh. to kind of make, make everything work on there. So that's, that's one issue that we've had. And we keep asking for more money through each city because each city gives us a certain amount of money each year. And we have to go through and kind of ask for it every year. Daily City is the hardest right now. And they're requiring way more information from the consumer that the consumer feels invasive about mm -hmm. so a lot of people get turned off on that side too you know like why do you need my you know my tax returns or why do you need to know how much money i pull in a year you know and then two landlords that's another factor landlords sometimes don't want any modifications done to their done to their buildings mm -hmm. so yeah there's a lot of different factors on it yeah with stair lifts it's kind of a you know, it's kind of a weight thing. You know, it's unfortunately, it just doesn't move fast in the world of nonprofits. Uh, if somebody does need like a ramp, like a six foot ramp, three foot ramp, something kind of small, I keep those in my reuse program. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you always feel free to reach out for something like that. Well, Davy City have the transportation program. So then uh, have your people, you know, have your client tells uh, uh, who lives in daily city to use their transportation it'll offset the ramping <laughs> yeah so daily city has like an accessible transport transportation program yeah i forgot what's it called because i yeah i have it uh written down so uh, but you can call over daily city and say what's the name yeah i didn't know that they had one on there so See, we all learned something new. Pacifica has one also, I think. It still exists, I think. 
Yeah, because I know that I know of Ready Wheels, but that's the only resource I know of. And then everything else is kind of pay. And then, you know, they also have the taxi company that is mandated to have a certain amount of wheelchair vans in San Mateo County. Uh -huh. but, um, Ready Wheels, you have to qualify for Ready Wheels. Oh, you have to qualify for oh, Ready yeah, Wheels. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. Is, but yeah, then you also that, get you also can get a uh, partial clearance for um, ready wheels. Right, you can absolutely. Yeah. But then you one thing is, don't partial. ever go um, try using them if it's for surgery. You don't want to miss your surgeries. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in other words, those kind you uh, there's a risk in terms of getting you there on time. Yeah, I mean, Ready Wheels does so many rides a day, it's hard to uh, make it precise because it's all a shared ride, too. Like, you don't get your own, necessarily, you don't get your own ride. It's right. all contingent with who's going, what places, when, too. So, anyway, I hope you guys continuing with your programs, you know, assisting people. So do we, because we need jobs. We need to keep our jobs. So yeah, definitely. And it's all your hard earned tax dollars at work. Department of Rehab covers a lot of our services. So Because rebuilding together, it's, you know, to me, it's sad. I see it as sad. That, they've you been, know, the quality. they having issues. Yeah, the quality, it's like, whoa, what? You got to be kidding, you know? And yeah. Uh, and they have Il Concilio. I think that was another one, but I think, I think it was Il Concilio, but I think they went out. Something happened to them. And then, yeah, really, yeah rebuilding together. I'm not sure how rebuilding together is actually fun to do. Yeah. No, I, do, I don't know. I don't know who funds them, but yeah. They, like used, to be called, they used to be called what, Christmas in April? Oh, really? Yeah. Isn't that the same program? I mean, same uh, company? Nonprofit? I don't know. I mean, I know it could be, yeah. yeah. I wasn't aware of that, but it very well could be. Yeah, there's yeah. no more Christmas in April is rebuilding together. Yeah, I mean, a lot of nonprofits got hit during COVID, too. Mm. Um, you know, there was like a child's nonprofit that would did the reuse program like we did just for child products. And they mm -hmm. ended up moving to the East Bay and then they shut down because oh. they were all volunteer driven. So, you know, there's was, still there's a program over East Bay for, you know, uh, the uh, wheelchair, um, bit, you know, um, walkers and such. And they, oh, have in San, yeah. they have in San Francisco, but it's only certain days and hours. Yeah, they have one in, in they had, yeah, they were only open one day. Uh, recares, recares. Uh -huh. And they're only open one day. They don't, I don't think they do power items. I don't think they work on power items too much. They try and keep everything kind of more, um, you know, not electrical. But yeah, they're big. They're really big, but they're only open one day a week. And they don't do deliveries or pickups, which is what we do. Uh -huh. But I'm the Lone Ranger. So, and also the local rotary or the villages, they're uh -huh. doing a reuse program also. And they have about yeah. 10 volunteers doing my job. But the villages in San Jose? San Mateo. Oh, San Mateo. Okay. Uh, San, Mateo San Carlos, San Mateo, and I think Redwood City. But they cover the peninsula. Okay. Yeah, and there it's called the Villages. That's the group, and they just started a new program. Um, but they're kind of sticking to more just durable medical equipment. Like for me, if I get an enlarger or I get something specialized for a disability, and then I deal like with power chairs and bigger things than that on there. So like I do stuff that they don't really touch. A lot of nonprofits don't really touch. No, nonprofits. no space, no space, no warehouse space. Yes, I'm working out of two storages, and my wife kicked everything out of my backyard. So now I'm at two storages. <laughs> it's called housing inspectors come by. <laughs> you, no, well, we own, we own our house, but she, then, of course, like right when I get rid of everything, she goes, hey, do you have one of those? Like, you know, I go, I got rid of them all. They're not at the house. They're all the storage now. But you know. It's called walkways. You got to be clear. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, save your way. happy wife, happy life, so. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Alan. 
You're welcome. Thank well, you. Thank you. Another, and we're doing another presentation in a month. For, yes, um, which I haven't published on our website yet. I will do that next okay. week. <laughs> and it's going to be uh, for emergency preparedness. And um, and yeah, that might be a good one to check out too, because we kind of cover emergency preparedness in San Mateo County and what resources we have and what to sign up for and whatnot. I and, volunteer um, for their CERT program. So that's- Oh, of, we, yeah. Kelly's on our so CERT So you might program. want them to, uh, you know, work with you in terms of like um, any of your trainings, you want to come up with uh, videos, you know, doing that. We have a video series of emergency oh, preparedness. Yeah, oh. let me go and try and grab the link real quick. Let me see. While you're grabbing the link, I have some like announcements that I'm supposed to make. Um. <laughs> oh, where the bathroom is? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I um, no, we um, the library is participating in a grant from the county to help promote COVID awareness. Um, so we're supposed to in all our programs share some info. Um, right now, our libraries are giving away free COVID tests, um, like the take home rapid tests. I think last I heard everyone but Millbrae still has them. But if you want to make sure I would call ahead. Um, and we're just giving away four tests per household. Um, What's the quality compared to what you get in the uh, hospital labs? They're probably not as accurate. Okay. I know the PCR mm -hmm. tests are the ones that are more accurate, but the rapid tests are good if you feel symptomatic and sort of want some reassurance. Uh -huh. okay. um, they're, they're definitely more effective than no testing uh, and they're a quicker option. Uh, um, and it's for antigens too? They are, they're the rapid antigen um, tests. Okay. So, um, so we have those available for free at most of our libraries still. Um, if you haven't gotten from the postal service too, um, they are now doing four more free tests for folks. You can sign up through the UPS or USPS. And Ellen, if you, if you, uh, if you go onto our CID, San Mateo, I put the link on there. But if not, if you go on YouTube and just punch in uh, CID San Mateo, we should pop up and we have a whole emergency preparedness series that we created over, over the time during COVID. Okay. And, and CERT also have their series too. So I don't know how, uh, if you guys are covering different grounds. We probably are on there. I'm pretty sure we are. Um, I mean, we're disability focused and, you know, but it's like, you know, telling you hook up for your SS SMC alerts. We're also working with the battery uh -huh. backup program through PG&E. So, yeah, you know, just certain projects that we've been working on. And then, um, and then Ben has been doing presentations with the Red Cross and um, San Mateo County um, for years. So, yeah, you know, so yeah, we got a, We got some history in it, and we're going to introduce Kelly, who's our new DDAR program manager, which is our dis disability disaster access and resources person, because everything has to be an acronym these days.